in this video, we're going to take a look at a black ink by Mont Blanc Permanent Black. Now, as always, down in the description are timestamps so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, it really would help me out if you check out the entire video. Also, if you like black inks, down in the description is a link to the black ink playlist. I'm an ink guy, and let's get into the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Claire Fontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and seven seconds to dry. Medium, marked fine, because I'm a moron. How dumb am I? Pretty dumb. That's the same thing, and for some reason it took 12 seconds to dry here. This is also an extra fine. The scrubby for both show no color variation. We didn't get it. We don't have the medium, because I'm a moron. The smear test says you can't recover if you smear while you're writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then, a Lamy 2000 with a medium nib was inked up, used for day, and used to take the notes for this video. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. No bleeding, a very minor ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 13 seconds to dry. And what's that? I actually wrote with a medium, thank you. Same tone as the extra fine and the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 31 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show no color variation, and there is none, none. The smear test, you can't recover it if you smear while you're writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down, and then it's put in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. Now we see a great deal of this really forming a line at the bottom. Now very interesting, just left of center, there is a slight greenish tone that seems to be going on there, which I was not expecting of Mont Blanc, to tell you the truth, I'm kind of impressed there. I like their inks, I just wasn't expecting that there. Other than that, this is largely a black ink with some green to help give it some more depth. The one on the right that's allowed to dry for 10 minutes is largely bonding with the paper, and if you look closely on the left third, you still see a little bit of that green kind of coming through there, and I hope it makes it through with the pictures that I put into this video. We can expect some resistance from this ink. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and seven seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine and the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 12 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show us no color variation because shading in black inks is black and it's not here. The smear test, you couldn't recover it if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on a page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, you can feel safe using this in a note-taking situation because it does not budge at all. Once it's in there, it's there. Look at the water. Nothing. Did nothing. It didn't even notice it. Pen flush? Nothing. Didn't notice it. Didn't care. One-third bleach solution? What? Who cares? Get out of here with that noise. None of it made it budge off the paper, but it only took water to get it to clean out of that pen nice and easy, which is really what you expect from a brand like Mont Blanc. The next writing sample is done on Twisby notebook paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and six seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine and the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and nine seconds to dry. Scrubby for both shows no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't want it. We didn't have to put up with it because it's not there. And the smear test, sorry, 
You can't recover it if you smear while you're writing. You just need to get your hands out of the way, man. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5, and the realm of normal was 2.1 to 2.9. Mont Blanc's Permanent Black has a viscosity of 3.23, making it a little bit drier than normal. If you're interested in how all that viscosity stuff is done, there's a link to that video down in the description. Now, let's take a look at the paper with the funny name, Monokaki. No bleeding, no ghosting, the 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 6 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine and the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, and 11 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show no color variation, and there is none, and the smear test, you could not recover if you smear while you're writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, and the realm of normal was 13 to 21 seconds. Mont Blanc's Permanent Black has an average dry time of 14 seconds, making it normal. The last writing sample is done on 28 pound premium copy paper. Now there's a faint bit of ghosting on the medium, but nothing going on in the extra fine. The medium has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and one second to dry. Scrubby shows no color variation, there is none, and the smear test, you could definitely recover it, because you can't smear it. Instead of finding inks that look like Mont Blanc's permanent black, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I decided to go with a nice orange from Diamine, their Coral. You remember, that kid from The Walking Dead that got eaten. Now, if you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description are different links to different color playlists. What do I think of Mont Blanc's Permanent Black? A great dark, no shading black. Very permanent. Not watercolor over it permanent, but protect your writing. This can do it. Pricing compared to other black inks? Mont Blanc's just a little bit pricey, but it does perform quite well. So what nib and pen are going to give the best writing experience with this ink? It's really a dealer's choice. It performs very well. It doesn't give shading. It's a nice, solid black tone. Realistically, in an office environment, other than signing your name in contracts, which you might use a broad or double broad, which even then it's going to perform very well. It's a dealer's choice. Such a good black ink. I hope you got something out of this video, and in the next video, we're going to take a look at a shimmering ink by Diamine, their Coco Shimmer.